good afternoon dear students today we shall discuss on the another aspect of the deadlock uh, where in the previous case we in the previous class we already talked regarding the definition of the deadlock a process that request for a resource and if the resources are not available it will wait however the waiting process never changes its state of waiting as the required resources are held by some other process which is also waiting for the uh, same uh, scenario that is in for the same reason so this situation is called as a deadlock which we already defined in the previous class also i am just refreshing it and then uh, in order to utilize the resources properly i already talked regarding the request uh, use and release is a better strategy and once the uh, deadlock uh, how uh, the deadlock occurs there are four different necessary conditions should occur mutual exclusion hold and wait no preemption and then circular wait there are four different ways of handling the deadlocks also uh, i just highlighted the first one is deadlock prevention avoidance detection and recovery in the previous class i already talked regarding the deadlock prevention uh, methodology of handling the deadlock in the case of the deadlock prevention the care is taken such that the four conditions which are uh, which you are seeing on the screen these four necessary and sufficient conditions mutual exclusion hold and wait no preemption and circular wait if any one of them does not hold then it is successfully deadlock is prevented i repeat if any one of these four conditions if one of them does not hold then deadlock is successfully prevented but however deadlock can be prevented by uh, ensuring that uh, uh, the one of the condition does not hold maybe quite seems to be easy but the difficulty is that it results in low device utilization and low throughput the strategy what we are using in the case of the deadlock prevention will result into low device utilization and the low throughput and uh, to better solution to this particular deadlock situation is a deadlock avoidance is the next methodology uh, of handling that particular deadlock so what is the deadlock avoidance strategy include series deadlock avoidance strategy it concentrates on allocating the resources to the processes in a such a way that the situation of the deadlock does not arise in the sense we try to form something what we call it as an safe sequence or the safe state so what is the safe state the state is said to be safe if a system can allocate resources to each process in such a order and still avoid the deadlock say for example if process uh, one particular process uh, printer uh, if particular say process p1 wants a, a printer first and tape drive next and then if process p2 wants a tape drive first and then printer next if system is having only one set of tape drive and the printer so first printer is required by p1 process consider you allocate it then uh, once the printer re is released by p1 then you allocate it to the p2 by that time p2 has released the tape drive so main maintaining the safe sequence is uh, uh, matter much more in the total given scenario that is what we in general uh, in generally we prefer so meaning of the safe sequence is very clear with existing resources you ensure a situation or allocation i can say rather than a situation allocate the resources in a such a smart and effective way that the resources are also allocated but situation also does not enter into deadlock state but however to ensure this a sequence is to be formed sequence in the sense if there are p1 p2 p3 p4 four processes are there so demands are different so whether p1 can be allocated first or p2 should be allocated or p3 process should be allocated or p4 should be allocated that is to be decided so that the deadlock uh, does not occur in the given scenario uh, you, so what this diagram uh, uh, says here in this particular which is available on your screen here is uh, the safe and unsafe two different parts of the system uh, the part is safe is no question at all in the unsafe part there is a possibility of the deadlock so entire this unsafe portion is not necessarily deadlock please keep in mind all unsafe states are not deadlock states but all deadlock states are certainly unsafe states so in this way uh, the things are been uh, effectively defined for the particular case of the deadlock now uh, 
in order to avoid the deadlock and ensure that the resources are uh, allocated properly and then it is being utilized properly so uh, something called as a banker algorithm is been introduced so banker algorithm as uh, the name itself says banker you are very familiar with the concept of banking system so banking system is having say the, it has some yum amount of money and if yum is an amount of money and yen are the number of customers if all customers demand uh, money to be withdrawn from the bank bank may not have that much sufficient amount of money to uh, provide them back so what it will do here is it will restrict certain conditions by which it will allocate the existing amount of money among the uh, existing customers or requested customers so that cash is also uh, not drained and at the same time customer is also satisfied so in the same scenario and the same formula is used in the case of this particular banking algorithm we shall see what is this banking algorithm further so uh, to before begin with the uh, basic algorithm of the banking algorithm we require certain data structures to be known you should be familiar with the data structure the first data structure is uh, what we call it as an available available indicates the number of available resources of each type each type in the sense say a printer how many printers are available yeah how it is defined available of j available is a one single dimensional array of j equal to k what it means that there are k instances of resource type rj so rj is a resource r is a resource rj in the sense say printer how many printers are available now rj is a one printer resource type r j is a printer how many printers are available is k instances and then similarly maximum n cross m matrix defines maximum demand by each process how many uh, uh, maximum it demands a particular process p so it is nothing but two dimensional array max max of i comma j is equal to k what does it mean now process pi may request for k instances of resource rj see i and j what is the meaning of i now here i is corresponding to pi process i corresponding to process p that is pi j corresponding to resource r so process pi wants resource R, uh, rj uh, equal to k instances it request maximum k instances say process p1 requires printer r equal to say 10 so process p1 requires printer 10 instances that is what we call it as a maximum in the given scenario next comes is allocation allocation is n cross m matrix define define the number of resources and each type of currently allocated to the each process allocation is how much are currently allocated max is what is maximum requirement but here how much is allocated if allocation of i comma j equal to k it means that process pi is currently allocated with k instances of resource type rj here above max is indicating how much maximum process pi is expecting for resource rj for k instances here allocation of i comma j equal to k means how much process pi is currently allocated of k instances of resource type rj then next comes here is need what is the need here now need is also again n cross n matrix indicating that the remaining resources that are requested because maximum it has uh, it is a demand but some amount is allocated in the allocation but in the need remaining part is in the need so need of i comma j equal to k it means that process pi needs k more instances of resource rj how you calculate the need need of i comma j equal to max of i comma j minus allocation max is maximum requirement and then allocation is how much it is allocated say 10 instances are required say 5 instances are allocated so 10 minus 5 is equal to 5 would be the need so i hope these matrix are already clear now now let us proceed with the safety algorithm what the safety algorithm says here is this algorithm fires whether the system is in the safe sequence or not please understand the purpose of the algorithm it finds whether the system is in the safe state or not what is the step one let work and finish are two vectors vector is nothing but an it is an uh, array single dimensional array length of m comma n respectively work equal to available were available in the sense how many are available uh, resources of instance finish of i equal to false in his work is not yet finished for the process pi uh, what is the name next step is find i such that so find a process i such that finish of i equal to false in the sense the work is not over process is waiting for the 
work to be done and need of i is less than or equal to 1 what do you mean by need of i we already talked about the need what is the need need of i is nothing but it is required resources how much amount of resources are required which are less than work what is the work work is available among available if a particular system has available of 10 printers now for a particular process pi need is say 9 still it can be allocated because availability is more and need is less that is need is less than work then allocation can be done so it is allocated and then work equal to work plus allocation and finish of i equal to true so if requirement if you have 10 rupees if someone asks for 20 rupees you cannot give it if you have 10 rupees and if he is asking less than 10 rupees you can allocate it in the same way the work is nothing but it is an available if the need is less than the available certainly it is allocated so work equal to work plus allocation and finish of i equal to true then go to the step two now this is a uh, first one is safe sequence calculation then again next comes here is resource request algorithm after a safe sequence we will check for further whether the request can be uh, any additional request can be fulfilled that is a very important try to get the difference between the two algorithm the safe algorithm will ensure that whether the system is in the safe state or not after admitting that system is in the safe state ensuring we will check any additional request is being made by any particular process whether that request can be fulfilled so how it is done let request of i is a request vector for the process pi pi will make a request for um, j and k instances for the process pi I wants k instances of resource type ij then check whether it can be allocated or not so what the algorithm further says here is if request of i i process request is less than need of i then go to step two what it says here is need is nothing but available if your request is less than available then uh, go to step two uh, step two what is the step two if request is less than available again check it out and if it is so then go to the uh, step 3 what is being done in step 3 available equal to available minus request what is the request here is whatever is requested to requested uh, to the system is been allocated so now we will deduct it and make it final available uh, from the request and then allocation equal to allocation plus request now why it is allocation plus request for a particular process i once available is been made so we will allocate it along with the additional request so that additional request is nothing but total allocation to a particular process i then need equal to need minus request so that is a new difference that has been calculated for this particular scenario fine this is an additional resource request algorithm corresponding to the uh, deadlock so now let us later i will take the problem on this particular case how the safe sequence is formed and then how additional request is evaluated in the given scenario thank you